let's just do this first and see where our hand lands. So we're gonna be able to draw a fresh four here and I'm just benching this to draw more cards. But that's gonna be enough for us to knock out turn one with Meloetta. We're gonna use Meletius Echo. We have one, two, three Fusion Strike energies in play. Plus we played a power tablet. So we're gonna be getting a knockout on the first turn of the game. Easy, easy, easy KO, 240, we take those. You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it! You what's poppin' peeps, welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. We're gonna be covering another Brilliant Stars deck, and in this case, it's gonna be a deck that some people love, some people hate, but it's the undisputed best deck in format, Mew v Max. Now, you may be wondering, why, did, why am I covering this deck again? Well, uh, Natalie Miller was able to win Brisbane Regional Championships with a new take on UV Max. So the list that I have is very inspired by her run at this event, and I'm really excited to show you exactly what this list can do. The notable difference about this deck is that it plays three double turbo energy and four fusion strike, no basic energy. There's a few other techs that are cool when it comes down to it, but uh, we'll cover those when it comes over to this video. I'm gonna be explaining the deck list, um, exactly where it's different than a normal Mew deck, going into some gameplay and more. Uh, so stay tuned for all that great stuff. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you like Mew, if you don't like Mew. Let's get that algorithm bumping, you know what I'm saying, peeps? Also, it's all one of those things too where if you are trying to support the channel or pick up any of the cards for this deck, you can go to ptcgeostore.com, find code ZILASSAGE5 to save 5% off your order. You can go to atlascollectibles.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE8 to save 8% off your order of Pokemon singles, or you can get some one-on-one -on -one coaching from me at metafy.gg slash at ZachLassage. I can definitely help you on your Pokemon journey. All those links are available in the description. The deck list is copy and pasteable in either PTCG or PTCG Live from the description. That being said, let's get it. Let's jump into this deck profile. So here's what we got going on for the deck. Now, Mew v Max is gonna look a lot like Mew v Max when we look at it. Um, you got the Mew V that you could whatever, and you got Mew v Max that's basically the star of the show. We're gonna be able to use Cross Fusion Strike, um, and we can copy in our bench Fusion Strike Pokemon's attacks. That can include a bench Mew v Max with Max Miracle, that could be Psychic Leap, that could be Energy Mix, although I've never copied Energy Mix after a Cross Fusion Strike, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, main attacks that we're gonna be copying are gonna be Meletius Echo with some Fusion Strike energies in play, or we're gonna be copying Techno Blast for that consistent 210. Now, the big thing that's changed about this list and that's inspired from Natalie's list is most players realize that Double Turbo Energy was good when Brilliant Stars released. They see a list with one, two, Natalie played three copies, and this just means that you need to attach it to go cross fusion strike. And there's a very good chance if you start the turn with no Mew V Max or no Mew with energy or anything else like that, you could evolve into a Mew V Max or have a Mew V Max double turbo boss knockout. It turns the game into punch, 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 win. Um, and I think that's very aggressive and it's very in line and in tune with Mew's inner strategy. It does minus 20 damage off, but we do have all the power tablets in the world. We do have all the choice spells that we have to include additional extra damage. A lot of people are wondering if Genesect should be banned out of this deck. That's how powerful it is. Fusion Strike system allows you to draw as many cards than you have in your hand as you have Fusion Strike Pokemon in play. It's a great way to just run through your deck. And with all these burnable trainer cards, like having Rotom Phone or having uh, the Cramomatics, Quick Balls, Ultra Balls, there's a very real chance that you could just pitch your whole hand away. The other notable things in this deck would be that there's a third single prize card Pokemon. Now with Mew VMAX being so popular, you wanna have a single prize card Pokemon in the active and a single prize card Pokemon on the bench if you're playing against Mew VMAX Mirror um, after going first so that they can't go turn one Meletius Echo with uh, an escape rope or with a copy of Switch and using uh, three double or three fusion strike energies with Ellis's sparkle. So that's something that they can do. I know that sounds like a mouthful, but basically Meloetta can knock out a two prizer on its first turn and they could go two prizer, two prizer, two prizer, win the game, draw all six prize cards. You could kind of combo breaker that by having an Oracorio in the front and a, Mew in, a Meloetta in the back or vice versa. Um, and that really works out there too. Notable changes between this list and other lists that I've seen are that my list only plays three switching cards. I don't think that decks are necessarily going to need as many switching cards. I find I'm more often burning them not or using escape rope very aggressively with cross fusion strike. So I think that's something that um, is kind of unique to this list. Not really a big change. I think that since we're trying to go boss, 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 I have added pal pad into this deck so we can get those bosses back. If you're supposed to go boss, boss, boss and mirror or something like that, it is pretty notable that 
if you only have three boss and you have to pitch one ultra ball or one's prize uh that strategy is not going to work i think a fourth boss or pal pad's good i decided to go with pal pad because you can cram a matic it um i do see lists that are playing um only two supporters two stadiums like natalie's brisbane list i think most players um globally will try to add three to four i think three is acceptable especially if we go with the four rotom phones right now um some players have even suggested going up the three rose tower i don't necessarily like that i think it's really difficult if your opponent plays rose tower themselves such as mu mirror match and um, I decided to add a Crystal Cave. Crystal Cave is the best stadium that I could think of for the metagame, especially with Oracorio playing against Jolteon VMAX that just won the Metafy largest like event, bigger than Brisbane, uh, the largest Brilliant Stars event. So it is something to note that that is helpful in that matchup. We're gonna be going through all this and more in our gameplay. I know it's a lot of mouthfuls and all that stuff, and it's a little bit of a longer deck profile, but I have covered Mew enough. This is really, we're gonna get in depth. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Beyond that, let's jump into some gameplay. Not sure if we're going to be banging out one or two games, but I really want to show like what's going on with MuV Max uh, strategy wise. So we're going to start off by calling tails, and we lost the coin flip. I know a lot of players debate between going first or second. I think going second's fine, but I, generally, I, I think it's much better to be going first with Mew in most matchups uh, because you do get that opportunity for the turn two boss after having an opportunity to set up. Uh, we'll see what we're playing against, but most matchups are pretty okay nowadays. Uh, looks like we're playing against Arceus and Teleon. Um, they do play Path to the Peak, so we do want to note that they are playing some kind of thing that we want to have stadiums for. Um, if they just drop a Path turn one, they probably won't because they need it for Starbirth. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with it once we get there. I mean, our hand's pretty good. We, we might just be able to knock this uh, Arceus out on our first turn with Elisa's Sparkle. Depending on where they attach, if they attach, they could just be losing an Arceus with energies putting us up two prize cards and they might not have a sizable way to jump back into it with a capture energy we definitely don't want to be playing any kind of escape rope now but it does look like we are going to be able to um at least hit this for 210 depending on what we have in our prize cards so step one is really going to be us just going quick ball um let's quick ball away in elsa that's the easiest thing that we can do and it's the freest search let's search through um Meloetta seems like the card that we want so that we have a target to go everything we have all of our fusion strike energies uh, so that's really what we're checking for here. I mean, everything's looking fine. We did prize a uh, stadium. I always want to say supporter, but we, we prize a stadium. Um, so it is one of those things where, like, I think we're in a good spot here. There's nothing crazy prized. Um, I think we might have prized a few Mew. So before we bench that, we do have opportunities to maybe pitch some other cards. We did have our Mew VMAX. I think... Um, we, do, we do need to find a way to... Let's just do this first and see where our hand lands. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, so we're gonna power up those so we can get off the Melodious Echo. And this is where it becomes difficult. We wanna be able to draw more cards with Genesect. So what we're gonna be doing is actually pitching away the Cramomatic and the Mu V uh, Max, uh, because we don't need all the Mu V Max to make everything happen. And we do wanna draw more cards with Genesect's Fusion Strike system. You can see we have our two Mu V Max and we have enough Ultra Balls to search whatever we want. Uh, trust me, those Mew Max, if you don't get rid of them, they will get uh, in your hand later on. So we're gonna be able to draw a fresh four here, and I'm just benching this to draw more cards. I think it's okay in this matchup, especially if they play dub double turbo energy and go for it, but we'll, we'll see exactly how it goes for us. And uh, we have the Power Tablet already. What I wanna do with the Power Tablet is actually wait on it because I'd much rather, actually, maybe I don't need to go for a Choice Belt. Let's just like pitch it and let's, so that's gonna be enough for us to knock out turn one with Meloetta. We're gonna go for Battle VIP Pass, search our deck for another Genesect, and we're gonna search our deck for another uh, Mew, since I think that's the best thing that we can do, uh, because if they knock out this Mew, we wanna be able to attack with other Mews. Let's go Fusion Strike System, see what we can do here. And when you're playing against a deck that plays Path to the Peak, you really wanna be just preparing yourself whenever possible. They can go Boss's Orders, Knock Out Mew, um, Path to the Peak, or something like that. I think what they actually can if they go double turbo energy because that's going to turn their attack to 180. This is going to turn to 160. So they have to go choice belt boss and not go path to the peak. So I'm actually going to sacrifice the choice belts. Uh, or actually, I'm going to put the choice belt there. That seems fine. Um, just to split things up. And I'm going to go Rotom Phone here to try to put something on top of our deck that could get out of path to the peak. 
whether it's a stadium or whether it's anything, we're gonna go for the cram and matic there um, because we can always pitch an escape rope, a pal pad, get out of it. And let's go get our knockouts. So we're gonna use Meletius Echo. We have one, two, three Fusion Strike energies in play. Plus we played a power tablet. So we're gonna be getting a knockout on the first turn of the game. Easy, easy, easy KO, 240, we take those. Come on, Stadium. Now we got another choice belt. That's fine. Um, if we get if we get under Path to the Peak, uh, we we do have some options. I think that's the biggest thing is that we have some options. But it is it is a little bit awkward right now. So it depends on what our opponent's also doing. Like sometimes your opponent's gonna miss the Arceus. Sometimes they're just gonna miss whatever is going on. If they just go with an Arceus V, or maybe like we'll have to see how they play out their turn. They could also Marnie us, which I'd be more than happy with. Uh, because they probably think that we have it, especially with the Rotom Phone. Or maybe we just have it in our hand naturally. We do have six cards in hand. Um, just having a large hand is screaming for your opponent to Marnie it, even if you have nothing. So that's, that's one of the reasons why you want to leave your hand pretty big. It gives your opponent this idea that you have uh, all the good cards hiding in there, giving you almost an extra Marnie. Oh, they're just going Power Edge. Yeah, so that's sick. We are just going to be able to take another knockout on this Pokemon um, back to back because they missed one step of the way. We're gonna send up this Pokemon because it does have the energy attached. So we just go Fusion Strike, uh, Choice Belt, Knockouts. So let's see what we could get going on here. Let's go this, this. We didn't even have to worry about the Power Tablet. How nice. And we could just put our other Mew down. We could start drawing some more cards. Now I don't really care about anything else like the Elsa Sparkles. So we actually wanna get that out of our hands and see what else we could do. Yeah, sick. So let's just go ahead, grab here, Mew V Max. Let's evolve this one. We have another Mew on the bench. It might be nice to have like another Genesect, but um, at least we have options for Psychic Leap. They don't really knock us out when it comes down to this matchup. And I mean, I'm just gonna play my hand out. Like Mew doesn't have any set rules. Just play the deck fluidly and you're probably gonna do pretty okay. We already have this going on in our hand. There's really not much that I wanna pitch away. We're looking for a boss or our opponent's just naturally gonna attack with this. Let's just go for Technoblast. I mean, you don't have to keep it like crazy. Let's just go Technoblast. We're ripping our opponent to shreds. And I mean, yeah, even if our opponent put up a little bit more of a fight, I could have fought for more power tablets and got the knockouts. We're already hitting for 240. I just needed one more power tablet. You can see how like quickly Mew can just like bop your opponent around. And I think that's one of the biggest things when it comes down to this deck is that Mew just can rip your opponent to shreds. And what's our opponent gonna do? Marnie path, Marnie boss, or boss path. We have answers to pretty much everything. And all they're gonna have to do is Starbirth here. So they're gonna have to get a Melanie this turn too if they wanna be able, even able to attack. That's the biggest thing that they have to worry about is they have to go Marnie in order to be able to attack. Uh, sorry, Melanie in order to be able to attack. You can see that like I just M words, I'm just blopping it out, but it doesn't matter. They're gonna grab two cards. Um, double turbo energy, Melanie makes the most sense. And there's the water energy. You can tell that they're just going for it. So that means that even if they do play Path of the Peak down, we do have Crystal Cave. We do have power tablets. They're not playing a Marnie this turn. They're playing a Melanie for sure. Or they're playing Raihan. So there's that. They're going to grab their double turbo. And okay, even if they don't, we would have probably won that game just thinning through the rest of our deck. Let's go. Yo, we won the flip. Let's go. Uh, this is a great way for us to get set up against pretty much any deck. And uh, starting off with a Mew and a Paddle VIP pass, there's really not much else that you could really be hoping for when it comes down to it. Let's see what our opponent flips up. Boom, we're playing against some Duraludon deck. We did take out a lot of our Duraludon techs, but we can go after this Pokemon very viciously. They do not play Path to the Peak, so we could play this one out, like, pretty interesting. Um, I think, like, we want to be checking for our Fusion Strike energies. We didn't prize much. So I, I'm really just going to try to go for, like, a Meloetta strategy here. Um, and then, of course, we want to grab a Genesect. I think Genesect sounds incredibly hot. Um, let's go ahead, power up this energy on our Meloetta, because next turn we could go Alice of Sparkle, Knockout, vibes is really what i'm trying to go for i'm gonna pitch these away um because we do have access to other double turbo energies and i think we're pretty good with that i'm gonna grab another genesect because i look at uh playing pokemon kind of like the base of a pyramid you want your bottom layer to be the highest structure so let's go ahead uh draw some cards let's get this fruitful setup um you can see that's great we're just gonna draw some more cards another two cards probably something to pitch away perfect um, and then we're going to be able to draw two more cards. If our opponent doesn't really get anything, we win the game next turn, and we have Cramomatics to really take our deck to next level. They're not going to do much, so let's just go pass here. 
So unless they just go ahead and attack with an Arceus, like we can start going after their Pokemon really quickly. It's super annoying to be honest that they play Avery, but at least they're not playing Marnie and I'm fine to pitch those two away. If they got nothing off that Avery, we're just going to totally rip their Pokemon to shreds. And if they go for an Arceus here, um, we're able to just knock out their Duraludon first. Or maybe we just go after knocking out their Arceus first. I really don't know which one's the best one right now. Um, but either way, maybe maybe just knocking out the Arceus is better. But we'll see how it plays out. There's another Duraludon. Cool. Okay, so without our opponent really doing too much, I, I if we could ever get Boss's Orders, I, I would probably rather go Boss's Orders, double turbo energy, knock that out with me VMAX. So let's see what we can get off this first. Um, let's see if we can get anything off of... How much do we need to do? We need to do 250 damage with hard coats. I'm fine to play this out. We'll see if we get anything there. Yeah, we're not going to get anything. That's fine. Let's just roll this and hope that our opponent doesn't get much. Sucks that we got double Chromomatic Tails, but I mean, it is what it is. Uh, we did get another Fusion Strike Energy, so I really have no complaints about that. We just naturally get the knock and we have power tabs for, like, next turn. We're going to draw some more with Fusion Strike System. So pretty easy going. Like, this matchup's pretty tough, especially with the cuts that we made in this deck. But next turn, we could just go triple power tab and be able to knock out, like, an Arceus V. Um... Let's go ahead, retreat, send this up, and let's just go Meletius Echo, 280 minus 30 is enough to get the knockout big time. And if our opponent just misses something here, this is where we're really going to be jumping back into the game. You can see that we're like fully set up to just go after everything that they have. And if they don't get out a Duraludon VMAX, or let's say if they put something else down, it'd be really good. Um, I think that they're just going to go for the Starbirth here, and they might be able, even able to go for uh, a single strike style Mustard. We did cut the Echoing Horn from this list, so that's something that Natalie did play, which would be really easy for us just to bring back a Duraludon or bring back an Arceus, but it is what it is. I think like we could just kind of power through a Duraludon VMAX, and if our opponent doesn't get the Duraludon VMAX here, like let's say if they just wait for one more turn for a Starbirth because they don't think we're going to get the knockouts, um, we're just going to knock this out because that'd be so much better for us to do. Yeah, there's their Starbirth ability. So this is pretty typical, and one of the reasons why the deck is built like this is because I took text out. If you are expecting a lot of Arceus Duraludon or in your local area or online events or whatever, you're seeing that, uh, make sure that you are like that you do have an Echoing Horn. It really does help out this matchup. You could bring back Arceus and make it a lot easier for yourself. I don't know why they went Big Charm on the active. That's fine. Oh, the Tool Jammer is kind of annoying on that. So we gotta do 310 damage to this Pokemon. That's still fine. I think it's like very doable for us here. How many Crystal Caves have they gone through? One? Cool. So let's go like this. Um, right now we're already heading for 210. Um, so let's hit for 300 so that we can get the knock. Or we're like one short of the knockout, but it is one of those things. Tool of is prevented attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Just double checking to make sure that we have uh, everything kind of okay. Let's go with the Rose Tower. Let's see if we can find anything on top of our deck. Um, I mean, I think Ultra Ball wouldn't be too bad at all here. We could kind of pitch our hand away and just kind of draw out of it. So let's go Fusion Strike System. I'm probably going to end up just pitching this hand away um, and searching the deck for the MUV so we can start drawing some more with this other Genesect. And we're really just trying to get that, like, knockout here. Okay, so we are going to be able to get the knockout. We are kind of jumping back into this position. So let's go ahead and uh, cross fusion strike, techno blast. And we're going to knock out our opponent's active. Now, the whole thing about this now is that we have to just go max miracle this Pokemon out of the game. Their tool jammers are really cool tech. I, I like it a lot. But they still have to go through two Mew VMAX, so basically attacking four times. So we have three turns basically to knock this out. Um, oh, I guess that like gives them a little bit less turns. Like if they're dealing with it, that's fine. Um, if they don't necessarily have boss every single turn, which I don't think they'll be able to have boss every single turn, 
Um, this is actually works out a little bit better for us. And we want to find a way to get around their crystal cave. Again, our deck is not built or well equipped to beat um, Duraludon. That's why we even play crystal cave for the Jolteon matchup. But we can bring it really close, even with playing no um, special energy or, or no basic energies. Um, because Max Miracle is totally a thing. So let's go like this. Let's go Power Tablet, trying to hit as hard as possible. And remember, Max Miracle is quite literally your only attack, so keep that in mind as we're going through this. Let's draw our two cards, see what we can get here. Not really much. Um, there's the Max Miracle number one. You can see there's the 160. They heal. Um, we're really looking for a way around it. I think like this game's not going to go in our favor, but we're going to try our best to put it in our favor. And our opponent might just go play down a Hyper Potion and heal off 120 they might do a lot of things, right? Like, their deck is well-equipped to beat this situation at this point. Um, but this is the difference between, like, us going first versus going second. Um, had they gone first and passed, we probably would have just taken them um, by going second. So it, it could be huge. And we'll try to draw into something else for next turn. There's G-Max Pulverization. Sick. See what we draw into. There's another Genesec. So we can draw like some more cards. Our hand's quite clogged up. We're really looking for something else. And you can see the Crystal Cave not helping us at all. So all we could do here is Max Miracle hit them. So they're at 260 um, right now. So the thing is they heal 30. Um, if, we, if we're able to find a double turbo energy on like we would have been able to win the game. There's nothing else that we could have done. Like they're just knocking us out. But like we were really like one turn short, we would have loved to attack that with a max miracle or do something. Sometimes your hand's gonna get clogged up. So there you have it. That's what we got going on with this deck today. I mean, I think we brought it really like well in that first matchup against Arceus and Teleon, crushing through our opponents. Showed that how the how the deck can play against Draladon. Now it is something that you might want to have for your Mew Max deck is including Echoing Horn. I find it's one of those like hit or miss cards. You might need it if you're gonna be hitting an Arceus Draladon deck. Currently, at the time of creation of this video, Arceus Duraludon is between 2-3% to of any given metagame, which is quite small when you think about it. If we're using my late night series on average at 350 players, 1% um, of that like is 3 players. So we're looking at anywhere between like 7-10 to 10 players are playing Duraludon Arceus at any given time. So if you're running into the 7-10 to 10 players that are playing it at any given time during the late night series or any similar size event, um, that's what that's what could happen, and I'm fine to take a loss. The same way that I could just hit a Gengar. Gengar is much more of a threat, chilling at 12% um, of the meta game to 15% of the meta game. You can see how it rapidly grows. This deck is designed to beat Mew Max Mirror whenever possible, and I don't think Echoing Horn necessarily helps out against that matchup. So as Arceus Duraludon continuously goes down because Arceus Inteleon is becoming more popular, it's one of those things where you have to make choices for yourself. And you can see that it's really close. I felt like we missed and our opponent did get us off on that Avery turn one. There was a lot of things that just like went our way but did not go our way that game. So it's it, it's definitely interesting to look into it. Our opponent got quite a good setup. And if your opponent gets a good setup, that's cool too. Remember that a lot of the bigger tournaments are going to be best of three and you are okay to lose a game. So that's what we got going on for this list. Maybe I would have liked to play one more game to just show you how you can go against everything. But if you are looking to get some more gameplay from me, feel free to hit me up for a coaching session on metafy.gg slash at Zach Again, that is in the description. Um, I could definitely show you what's going on with Mew Max. I, I literally do coaching like 40 hours a week and I've been pretty full, um, probably past that. I've pushed myself to like the 50 hour mark a lot for the past couple weeks as players have been getting ready for Brisbane regionals and Salt Lake and all that kind of good stuff. So if you are looking for something, I can make room in my schedule. And I, if I'm playing new like 30, 30, 40 hours a week, it's, it's one of those things where I could really show you what I can, what I can learn in that amount of time. So feel free to hit me up there. As always, if you're trying to build any of these decks, go to ptcgeostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5 to save 5% on your next order of codes. You can go to atlascollectibles.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE8 to save off your um, singles there. And check out the late night series. It's now going to be starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, check your local time zone to make sure with the recent time change and all that stuff. Um, that it's still compatible, but I hope to see many of you playing out in the tournament. Um, it's got so large to the point where it's going to be huge. Uh, we, we just need to put the time down. I can't go to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning anymore. It's uh, a little bit too much. So 
I hope that everyone has just a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And I'll catch up with all y'all later. Peace out and have a great one. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. And my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game and knowledge with our entire Pokemon TCG community. If you haven't already, help Signal Boost this video to other Pokemon TCG fans by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video and have yourself a great day. Thanks.